Salutations and welcome to my haunted abode. Today we are back with White Day, a labyrinth named school. The reason why we're back with this game six years later is because I specifically want to revisit the portion of the Hidden Ghosts. I was not very happy with the video that I made a long time ago because I was completely heedless to give context on all the Hidden Ghosts. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this episode. I'm going to be looking for all the documents and for each document we will be looking for that ghost afterwards. So it's going to be an organized, structured video. And I guess I'm looking forward to seeing all of So Young's indelicate remarks again. I think we're going to have to start a new game. We don't want to start from a brand new load because I probably encountered all of them. So let's play it on hell mode. Challenge yourself in the most horrifying and difficult mode. How is this any more difficult than hard mode? Because hard mode's actually easier than normal mode. Oh my gosh. This game responds a lot faster than the sequel. Guys scared me too. I said this exact same thing when I was in Anime Expo. Guys scared me too. By the way, the girl with the glasses is who we're looking for from the sequel. She is the queen of hide and seek. Ah, oh, here's a lighter. Yeah, in this game we only had lighters. In the sequel you had flashlights. Oh, you're in this game. God mode deactivated. Deactivated? Oh, I didn't even get to save either. Here's an item we'll need. Yeah, so this is a love letter. A love confession letter written by a female student. That's right, this is not the sequel, so you're permanently damaged until you heal up. There we go. I forgot she existed. Why don't you answer me? She's so moody, I love it. You're blocking my way! After another, they just keep coming. I gotta beat him up with a stick. Ugh. I totally forgot she's a huge So Young fan. Oh my goodness. Ugh. So I recall, if you want to activate her in her DLC, you have to find her artwork all over the walls. No janitor activated. Oh, you... Ugh. Why does the cheat engine say that, but the janitor's still there anyway? How do you turn on god mode? It keeps saying deactivate, even though it keeps pressing the same buttons. Yeah, this is what I wanted to get. Oh, this is a different brand. Oh, that's why. It's a selected premium. Alright, so I gotta go hide. Cheat activated. Alright, in goes the typewriter keys. What did that do? Oh, it typed up something. That's a ghost story. Yep, dying message. Nobody recognizes me. How much I care and love my students. All I meant for the kids to grow up. Good and polite, but they only complain how harsh I am without thinking about how I feel. But I can endure this. Someday the students will see me differently. Yes, that has to happen. So you're expecting to be like a piccolo? Wait, this isn't even a ghost story, I just realized that. There was a junior year kid who died while sneaking out of the dorm for my watch. Am I so terrifying that the kids would take such an extraordinary route? It's not like I am raising them. Lately, I have been doubting myself slowly convinced that maybe I am in the wrong. Where did it begin to go wrong? I just heard the rumors today. It was about the kid who recently died. The rumors said that maybe I killed the kid myself. I was so bewildered and angry that I could not say anything. Something snapped me inside of me. My true intention will never make it way into them. I am sick of everything. The quieter I get, the louder they buzz, like a swarm of disgusting flies. They keep buzzing in my ear. No one is going to save me but myself. I gain nothing from holding back. I cannot hold it anymore. Today, I will make an example out of someone. They will never be noisy again. This is a war. A war that will not end until one of us is gone. Hmm. Pretty dark of a teacher to say that. Was that seriously not the ghost story? What? Alright, I got the small master key so I can open this now. And this gives us the ghost story. So the rumor is giving us the code for the small master key. So, I kind of click there now. All right, ghost of a house parent. At the time of its establishment, Y High School was in the middle of nowhere, at the base of a mountain with hardly any human traffic. Due to this reason, Y High School had dormitories for the students. In the female dorm, there was a notorious house mother, Miss C, whom everyone was afraid of. Coming from a good family background, she demanded that the students behave and follow rules. At all times, she would give harsh punishments for any violations of the rules, 
and this caused many students to complain about her. It was a little after the midterm when a junior fell out of the third floor window and died. She was trying to sneak out of the dorms while evading the house mother's watch to go out and celebrate at the end of the midterms. Well, I mean, good for her. Screw the house mother. But for some reason, the rumor spread that the girl committed suicide because of Miss C, or even worse, that Miss C had killed that girl herself. Well, that's taking it too far. Miss C was in a great shock, and for a while she stayed silent as if her spirit was broken. The students were happy about this change and secretly kept an eye on Miss C to see if she would return to her old self. Then came the incident that riled up all the students. Miss C was doing her rounds and found a student whose hair was longer than regulation. Miss C took the student to the bathroom and cut the girl's hair. But when that happened, the student and all of her friends surrounded Miss C and protested against her harsh punishment and strict rules. At first, it was only a few students who spoke up, then one by one, they were joined by angry voices opposing Miss C, and soon enough, every student in the female dorm started protesting against her. Anywhere Miss C looked, an angry glare met her gaze. Finally, Miss C broke under the pressure and her own pent-up emotions, and she ran out of the dorm screaming like a mad woman. None of the students cared. No one went after her trying to calm her down. In the end, Miss C's body was found on a nearby mountain a few days after she went missing. Since then, people started reporting that they've seen the ghost of Miss C. The rumors spread quickly, and the girls in the dormitory suffered from insomnia and fear. Eventually, the dorm had to be shut down. Even so, there are still sporadic reports of sightings of Miss C's ghost. It definitely took it too far, then. I gotta say, the people just love to exacerbate things in this game. Ah! Hi. And then when I walk out, she's gonna be on the side of the door. Hooray. What is this? I don't remember this. What's the code? I thought so. So I gotta go back to main building too, if I wanna figure that out. Because that's randomly generated. That's where you get the uh, fox spirit. You know, the ghost that's been singing in the hallways. I wanted to get that note, but it's locked up in there. Okay, we're finally gonna do this fox spirit one. So it involves trying to figure out the codes with this, huh? Two? What do you mean by two? Oh. Oh, everything that's circled is giving me the code. Okay. So there's a C to start off. There's like a a line, an L, and a line down it, and a butterfly. Okay, got it. Okay, so we know that this one's a C. Uh, there's a butterfly in there, so we'll go ahead and put that one in too. There's that. There we go. Woohoo! That was not hard at all. Okay, the impassable bridge. Finally, we can read this. Although it was early in the morning, the whole school was filled with an uneasy buzz. Chow Min, a student, was found unconscious in the hallway. This particular hallway was the passageway between the main building and the new building, and it was rarely used. It was built with an interest design that puzzled all of those who set eyes on it. Its purpose was to be a bridge that connects one building to another, but it was shaped like a tunnel with fluorescent lighting, but not one window. This made it seem creepy, even during the daytime. What's more, getting to the other building wasn't a straight path, but instead twisted and turned. All of that combined made fewer and fewer students use the walkway. I don't know, when I say that walkway, I kind of think of like an airport. And the less that people use it, the more creepy the rumors about it became. One rumor said that while walking down the passageway, which felt like walking into a cave, there were sounds of footsteps either behind you or coming from the front. Either way, you'd never see anyone there. Another rumor said that if you enter this hallway in the middle of the night, you will never get to the other building, but instead get lost in a labyrinth of corridors until the break of dawn. The night before the accident took place, Chow Min told his friends that he didn't believe in such a bogus story. Being teenagers, they dared Chow Min to prove himself. So Chow Min and his friends came to the school in the middle of the night. The test Chow Min was given seemed simple. He only had to go through the passageway, get to the other building, and bring back an object from the classroom. Chow Min wasted no time beginning this easy venture, and quickly opened the door to the passageway. He disappeared into the darkness, and the door shut behind him. When Chow Min was alone, he realized it was scarier than he had imagined. 
passageway was without a single window, and all you could see were the small patches of light, like islands in a pinch black sea. Hmm. That's a cool analogy, actually. Chao Min shivered and began to regret making this bet with his friends. When the sound of the footsteps echoed loudly in the empty hallway, it felt like something from the darkness would come running out at him at any second. Chao Min gathered together what courage he had left and started walking as fast as he could. That's when something passed by him and lightly brushed his neck, making a metallic sound. His hair stood to the end. He felt like something was right behind him. Was he hearing things? He thought he also heard faint laughter. Chao Min, clenching his teeth, bravely turned around. Nothing was there except a completely empty hallway and darkness. Chao Min, who had been scared to death, was a bit relieved, until right at that moment, he heard a whisper. What are you doing here? Terrified, Chao Min ran as fast as he could, screaming. It didn't matter how fast or how far he ran. He would never be able to make it to the building on the other side. At last, Chao Min suffered a panic attack and was shocked into unconsciousness. His friends, after waiting a long time, all returned home. Everyone was worried for Chao Min, yet no one suggested going to look for him. So that's how Chao Min was found lying unconscious in the passageway the next day. From that day on, the students have called this passageway the Impassable Bridge, or the Labyrinth. Hmm. So, the Fox Spirit has nothing to do with being a student. It seems like it's another, uh, legend. That's a disappointment. There's that goes. Yeah. I don't know where this ghost is in the sequel. I love the melody. She comes closer. And it's apparently random if she attacks or not. That's dark. I hate my old videos, man. That was the first time she attacked me. The last time I played this, she finished the melody. Oh my gosh, I would have never guessed that. Okay, we got the ghost story for this now. Boy kills girl. Ji Saob, a new transfer student to Y High School, had recently heard a horror story about the school from a classmate. So of course, of all nights, the night he had to come back to the school to grab something, he left was a stormy night. The quiet pouring of the rain reminded him too much of a scary story. Only a few years before, there was a student named Ji Hai. She was dating a boy named Myung Ho, who shared the same homeroom with her during the first two years of school. When they were their seniors, they were assigned to different homerooms, and Ji Hai began dating Ho Young, who was in the same homeroom as her. Myung Ho, who could not accept such a sudden breakup after dating Ji Hai, for two years, he tried multiple times to go to see her and pled his case, but Ji Hai completely ignored him. Growing more resentful with each rejection, Myung Ho began to hate Ji Hai. One day, Myung Ho decided to go to see Ji Hai one last time in her classroom during lunch break. Ji Hai, just like all the times before, was cold and cruel and ignored his pleas. In rage, Myung Ho took out the knife he had brought with him. Of course, he was planning on hurting her. He wanted to mend his wounded ego by watching her tremble, seeing her finally acknowledge him. However, Ji Hai knew him all too well. She knew that even though he acted tough, he was just a narrow-minded, scared little boy. Seeing his desperate attempt with the knife made him so repulsive that she became angry at him. She called him names and taunted that he would never have the guts to actually use the knife. Alas, her taunting worked. Myung Ho, momentarily blinded by rage, swung his knife and stabbed Ji Hai. Ji Hai fell to the ground, her blood running across the entire floor, 
Myung Ho, scared and confused by the scene, went berserk due to Myung Ho slashing his neck crazily around him. No one dared to go near Ji Hai. They could only watch from afar as she bled out. Since that day, there is said to have been sightings of a female ghost lying down on the floor as if she's asleep. Ji Sao tried to block the story from his mind when he reached the classroom. When he opened the door through, his efforts were in vain and he tripped. Falling backwards in terror, he saw a girl lying on the ground in the dark like she was asleep. Alright. So, I don't know if I've like fully activated her to where she gives me the jump scare. I don't remember if I ever did that in the video, but we'll see what happens now. We'll encounter her again in the new building, so no sweat. Oh, maybe this triggers her, because she's facing towards me now. Yeah. Well, there we have it. So you can encounter her more than once in the new building, I didn't know that. Taehoon was serving detention again. He was made to write an essay to apologize for beating someone up that afternoon. The real problem Taehoon had was that he was the only one being punished. He suspected that the boy he fought was from a wealthy family. Taehoon knew the faculty coordinator was corrupt enough to take bribes. Unlucky day, he taught. Thought? My gosh. He felt like it was going to fall from all the riding he did. To top it off, he was also hurting from the fight. The other student couldn't beat him fair and square, so he grabbed a broom and swung it at Taehoon. It was at that moment that Taehoon had just taken away the broom that the faculty coordinator showed up. Because of that, Taehoon ended up getting beat even more. Thinking about everything that happened made him angry again. He tried to calm himself down and was determined to beat up the boy as soon as he came to school tomorrow. Suddenly, he heard a clattering sound in the closet behind him. It sounded like a mouse was trapped inside. Since the building was very old, it wasn't rare to find a mouse at the school. He tried to ignore it and concentrate on writing his essay, but the clattering sound continued. Already agitated, Taehoon violently threw open the closet doors. What he found was not a mouse. There were rumors that a ghost's head had been flying out of that closet. There were also rumors that male students had been found inside the closet with their bodies crushed and mangled. The teachers tried to contain it, but the story spread like wildfire. According to the rumors, the school was used as a concentration camp for political prisoners during the occupation. Many people died here after being tortured, with the dishonor of being labeled traitors. One of those tortured souls included a woman who was arrested on behalf of her husband who dodged conscriptions during the war. She was tortured viciously to reveal the whereabouts of her husband, but kept her silence. Oh, that's loyalty. In the end, they locked her up in a specially designed closet where she could neither lie nor sit. She died slowly in agony without being able to move. It was after the war ended that her corpse was recovered. It is said that they had difficulty putting her body in a coffin because her neck and knees were bent stiffly at odd angles. Students believe that her ghost still wanders around in the walls of the school. It's said that if you open a closet at night, she will stick out her twisted neck to claim her next victim. So this is the woman in the closet. This is basically the ghost that's still in the sequel. So when you look inside a locker, she pops out. That's the ghost that they're referring to. Let me speak to your manager. All you ever do is complain. Go away! Ah, here's the ghost tree story. Mei Hun quickened her steps towards the classroom. Whatever sunlight there was has now completely disappeared, and the school was covered in darkness. Mei Hun was annoyed with her friends. They had stopped on their way home to chat with her. Even though she was still busy cleaning, they didn't even offer to help and just left her on her own when they ran out of things to talk about. Yeah, those are not good friends. Uh, this made Mei Hun uneasy as why high school was full of scary rumors. To make matters worse, she saw no students around today. She found the echoing of her footsteps quite nerve-wracking. Her anxiety grew even more when she saw the potted tree in the corner of the hallway. This plant used to belong to her homeroom teacher last year. It reminded her of him and what happened that year. Her homeroom teacher, Mr. B, taught Chinese. He was quiet and had a thin build. He gave off a sad vibe. He wasn't friendly at all, not even trying to connect with his students or fellow teachers. He did, however, seem interested in maintaining his plants. He took extra care of the plant of his homeroom, junior homeroom too. He cared for his plant so much that he checked it out during every class break. 
Then one day, a student accidentally dumped chemical solvent on Mr. B's favorite tree. How do you accidentally dump the chemical solvent? The tree turned black and shriveled up completely. Afraid of the percussions, the student replaced the tree and decided to burn the old one. Even his friends were in on his plan. Together, they moved the dead plant to the incinerator and lit it on fire. The dead tree easily caught fire and was soon burning with billowing black smoke. When the flames grew even more tense, a scream was heard. It was like the burning tree was screaming out of pain. That's when Mr. B came running. Watching his favorite tree burning made him go crazy. Before anyone could reason with him, he dashed into the open flames to be with his favorite tree in the fire. Both Mr. B and the tree were engulfed in flames. Wow, he's obsessed with the tree. In a matter of seconds, no one spoke. Everyone was in shock from what they had just observed. Judging from the matching statements from the students involved, the police decided that it was a case of suicide by delusion. Mihun was there that day at the incinerator. That's why every time she saw a plant Mr. B used to care for, it made her shiver. She normally made an effort to not pass through where the plants were. She would have walked around it today, too, if she wasn't in such a hurry. Mihun tried hard to calm herself down when she saw a light in in the nearby home room. She heard someone moving in there too, scared of being left alone in the dark building. She was happy to see that there was someone else in school. She quickly opened the classroom's door, but what she saw was the back of a man in front of a plant. Mihun froze in terror when she realized what she saw what she was seeing. This was her homeroom from last year, junior homeroom too. The man slowly turning around and faced Mihun. He was holding a dog's corpse with its belly ripped open, and his other hand was covered in blood. How does the dog get in there? Behind him, Mihun could see that blood and organs were covered the leaves and stems. He slowly approached Mihun and said, Oh good, I was running out of food for my tree. Oh no, what happened to Mihun then? It should have been Mihun's friends. Alright, interactive cutscene here. They had a lot of these in the first point day. Wow, they're pretty generous with the timing there, even for hard mode. Whoa, I've never noticed this hard work. Is that so young and sung up? Ah, you can't beat me up now. I like how he can still beat me even though I put this in. So that's one thing that the sequel has done better. It's like when you put the amulet in, it cuts you into a cutscene. But with this game, if you put an amulet in, the janitor still beats the heck out of you. And for anyone who's telling me no cheating, I played this six years ago. I already completed the entire game. I got all the endings already. <laughs> Something must have been really funny. I thought that was going to be like Sung Uh crying from the fire. Did we come in here? I didn't know that. Oh, you're still here? What's happening? What's happening? The janitor was just beating me to a pulp. What do you think, so young? How does he just know where I'm at? I was like three floors ahead of him. Everything's just like fading. Oh, it's this ghost again. I didn't know that. This ghost can like emanate. Say, are you looking on top of the ceiling? That's crazy, I did not know that. All right. The wailing from the art room. Sao Hun had a crush on the new art teacher at Y High School. The art teacher was young and talented, and Sao Hun wasn't the only girl who fell for him. Desperate to become his favorite student, she gave her all in her art class. She had always been gifted with her hands since she was a child, and soon she did become his star pupil. Seeing Sao Hun's talent, the art teacher advised her to apply for an art college. Sao Hun accepted his advice and began to take private lessons with him. This was a dream come true for her, to be left alone in school with her crush, spending hours together practicing art. At some point, a strange rumor started circulating through the school. The rumor was that there was a teacher dating a student. The rumor made its way into the ear of the school administration and soon the young art teacher left without warning, as if he was banished from the school. The rumor was never confirmed. Then why did the administration believe it then? In the middle of the night, with her favorite teacher gone, Sao Hun sat alone in the art room. The faint moonlight through the window rested in her shaking shoulders. 
She was crying mournfully. In her hands, she held an unfinished clay doll of a woman. Great care had been taken care in forming of the clay doll's face, and it looks like Xiao Hun. With her eyes full of resentment, she stared at the doll. The next day, the whole school was in shock. The dead body of a female student has been found. It was revealed that the girl had killed herself by overdosing on sleeping pills. Even more shocking, however, is that the dead girl was found to be pregnant. Oh, it's this? Ah. I was not expecting the female student to be pregnant. The school tried to prevent students from spreading unconfirmed rumors about this accident, but soon the whole school knew and there were all sorts of theories about the girl and who the father was. A lot of people pointed their finger at the art teacher, but it was never confirmed. After the incident, people began to report that they could hear a baby's cry near the art room. At first, the crying was so faint that people merely thought they were hearing things, but as time went on, it became so loud that the vibrations felt like an earthquake. A baby's ghost with its umbilical cord wrapped tightly around its neck was also reported as appearing. Even to this day, they say you can see a baby's ghost in search of something during shadowy moonlight nights. It is imperative you must remember not to follow it, for you should fail to find what the baby wants. It might drag you down into deep darkness instead. I'm interested now. Did the art teacher knock off the student? We'll never know. Alright, so that's one of the ghosts. It's going to become a Brobdenagian baby later on. There it goes. It's now a Brobdenagian baby, like I said. Hmm. The secret of the pond. A long time ago, there used to be a small pond between the main building and the auditorium. They say that the pond was created by a bomb during the war. and had obliterated a refugee tent that had been pinched over there. Obviously, every refugee in the tent died. It is said that at the bottom of the pond was tainted blood with their red. Tainted red with their blood. There is another story about the pond as well. If you write to your crush asking them to come to the pond and they show up, you will live happily ever after with them. A warning though, if your crush doesn't show up, then you will die by the pond's curse. So it's a 50-50 risk then. The Sam, a quiet and shy student, had a crush on an older student named Chen Zhao. Her crush deepened and she couldn't deal with her longing anymore. She finally decided to write a letter to Chen Xiao and wait at the pond. But her letter never made it to him. The letter passed through many hands, but somewhere down the line it got lost. The Sam had no idea that her letter was never delivered and waited for him all night at the pond's edge. The cold night spent by the pond caused her to come down with a serious fever and she had to miss school for quite some time. After the Sam narrowly recovered, she returned to school and was even quieter and more timid than before. Her friends tried as much as they could to console her, but she ended up transferring to a different school. It was only a few days later that her body was found floating in the pond. It is said that on the night with the waning moon, a ghost appears who silently looks in from the outside of the building. They say that the water bloated ghost, with eyes gleaming wildly underneath the dripping wet hair, searches for the boy who has sent her letter. Alright, that was horrible. Not horrible as if this is a bad ghost story. It's just a big misfortune for this female student. But I do have to say, this was probably my least favorite ghost story so far. Right here. Uh, I guess I can't turn on my light. I guess it's all for the best. I think the ghost emanates some light on its own. Yep. She definitely does. I'll take that away and have these all open. The reason why I took that away is because room 3-4 tells you where everything should go. Alright, anyway. That's not who I was concerned with. I thought that was like the head goes because of the heat wave, but I think the heat wave's coming from the liar. I'm wrong. Head ghost is in here. Oh, there she is again! Ah, uh, anyway, we're here to read the note. Extreme dieting death. Young Mi was a senior high school student, and she had never been happy with her body. She was excited to become a university student, 
with only the entrance exam standing in her way, but regretted that she wouldn't get to have any campus romance with her kind of body. What makes her think that she's going to have campus romance either way? Well, I guess she knows that she's good looking. It's just she's suffering from body dysmorphia. So she would always say that she was on a diet. The strange thing was that she didn't look overweight to others. The people around her would tease her that she would actually gain a few pounds. Still, young me doubted their words. When she looked in the mirror at the back of the classroom, she only saw an overweight girl. Look at what a pig I am. How could they call me thin? How could they say that I could gain a few pounds? The only conclusion that young me could come to was that they were being sarcastic. Just you wait. I will become thin. I will not eat anything until I am thin. From that day, young me didn't eat anything, but would only drink water. She became thinner by the day until it was to the point that she was just skin and bones. She barely had energy to even move, but she continued her refusal to eat. She just does not know how to call it quicks, huh? How does she keep track? When she was forced to eat, even just a little, she would run straight to the bathroom and throw up. She had lost so much weight that watching her walk around the school was a creepy sight. Her friends and teachers, who at first had been worried, began to avoid her. Avoid her? That is horrible! Then one day, a new boy transferred to her class. Wanting to make quick friends, he treated the whole class to pizza and burgers. You know, judging how this is Seoul, South Korea, I bet that the pizza and burgers are bomb. Nothing like what we have in America. With the teacher's permission, they served the food in the classroom and held a party. Everyone was able to enjoy the food while relaxing and letting go of the stress of preparing for the college entrance exam. The transfer student spotted young me sitting by herself by the window. Even in the celebratory move, she was not eating. The thought never occurred to him that she was on a diet. He just figured that she didn't get to have her share yet. So he brought her one of the remaining burgers and a soda. No, I'm not eating. I won't eat anything. I'm still fat in the mirror, can't you see? Young me stood up and shouted with rage as she pointed at the mirror at the back of the classroom. Suddenly, the classroom went quiet. Her face was contorted with anger and her eyes glinted with insanity. Young Mi started snickering and looked around her. All the kids eyes were locked on her in fear. To her, it seemed like they were all staring with eyes filled with disdain. Young Mi stormed out of the classroom screaming. Nobody moved to stop her. In the end, she was found dead in the mountain nearby, having starved to death. Her classmates tried to figure out what Young Mi meant with her last words. What did she mean by the mirror? We don't have a mirror in our classroom. Interesting. You know, I really like this story because this one's really closer to my heart because, in case nobody knows, I do weight loss content on this channel. I definitely don't go this extreme, though. Like, I have been pretty close to underweight, but I would never go as far as, like, starving myself to death. There's the anemic ghost. Unfortunately, not in the sequel. I have no idea what happened to all these ghosts. Their spirits couldn't have moved on, right? I have no idea what she just said. That was indecipherable. Now, this is a very hard puzzle to figure out. It involves Morse code, so I had to go back to the previous building to figure this out. Uh, I tried out all the codes that I saw on YouTube, and none of them are working. Alright, I combined the red and yellow key to open up this. This should give me the Morse code chart. And I think I figured out what I needed to do with this. So it is involving the uh, Lost Face Ghost story. Which is what I was having trouble with earlier, but I figured out how the code works. Now notice the dot and dashes on this chart. So we're going to be messing around with the pendulum here. So if the pendulum is moving fast, that means that it's a dot. If the pendulum is moving slow, that would make it a dash. So I'll show what my example is going to be like. All right, here we go. So when it goes down the first time, that does not count. It starts to count right here. I don't know why that is, but I'm going to keep silent now.
All right, so it's complete. So I'm gonna have to rewatch back on this recording and see what the code is. All right, after writing my Morse code down, mine turned out to be 7318. So 7318. Bam, bam. Lost face. An ah was a popular girl. Not only was she pretty, she was musically talented as well, winning many awards since she was young. Everyone loved her. As often happens in these cases, everyone wanted to be friends with her, and she became egotistical. In contrast, Misuk was hardly known by anyone in school. She thought she was ugly. That caused her to have self-confidence issues, making her timid and introverted. Due to this, she had no friends to speak of. Even her classmates hardly acknowledged her existence. One day, Anna was walking in the hallway while noisily chatting with her friends. Misuk focused on cleaning, didn't realize anyone was there, until Anna ran into her. Misuk stumbled and dropped the moat bucket she was carrying, spilling dirty water all over the hallway. Anna never said sorry. She barely spared a glance at Misuk, then walked away silently. Angered, Misuk went after her and demanded an apology. Instead, she was mocked. What are you blubbering about? You're as ugly and dirty as that mop water. Ha <laughs> ha. The other kids snickered in agreement with Anna's cruel remark. Misuk's face turned red in embarrassment and anger. From that day, she was an easy target for bullying. Every time she walked by, everyone would mock her without caring if she could hear. As time passed on, her resentment towards Anna grew to hatred for Anna. She decided that she would get revenge on Anna for what she had started. How pretty does she think she is? Does she think that beauty lasts forever? We'll see about that. One day, Anna was chatting away with her friends in the music appreciation room. Misu quietly approached them and as usual, the kids began mocking her. No one paid any attention to the bottle she held in her hand. Misu took the cap off of the sulfuric acid she brought and threw it at Anna's face. Anna's scream of pain filled up the room and echoed through the halls. The kids around her scrambled away in horror. Not one soul stayed behind to help Anna. Anna pleaded for help as she screamed in agony, but Misu just smiled cruelly and watched her beg. Anna's pretty face was eaten away by the acid. She was fortunate to have survived the attack, but it had left her with a hideous scar covering her half the face. There was no trace of her former beauty to be found. After that incident, she would not go to school, refusing to even come out of her house. She broke all the mirrors inside, and her disfigured eyes, being sensitive to light, caused her to keep the house eternally dark. Her depression became so deep that one day, it drove her to leap from the roof of the house. They said that it was hard to identify her body because she struck the ground face first, completely destroying what had remained. Since her death, there are rumors of sightings of Anna's ghost in the music appreciation room. It is said her ghost always has her back turned, and that you'll die if you ever see your face. Well, that didn't happen to me because I succeeded with the boss fight. Another boss fight, here we go. So this is the lost face ghost, I think? Oh no, she's going too fast. I defeated her. Alright. Oh, well, that's that. Oh, here's a library ghost. Competitive spirit. Kyung Hee's father passed away when she was young, so her family struggled with money. Her family expected her to go to a vocational high school and start making money as soon as possible. Kyung Hee, however, had a different idea. To her, studying hard and getting to a good college was the only chance they had at escaping poverty. So against her family's wishes, she decided to attend a regular high school. In high school, Kian He stayed true to her goal of studying hard. Her grades were so excellent that she became one of the top students in the prestigious Y High School. For her, however, it was not enough. No matter how hard she tried, she just couldn't beat the student in first place. The number one student was a cheerful girl named Se-Yun. She had always been popular because of her smarts and kind nature. It was said her father was a top government official. Maybe that explains how Se-Yun could be so competent and positive all the time. Maybe she's like paying top dollar for a Quizlet or whatever they have in the 2000s. Anyway, ki hee had never once seen her study. She only ever saw her laughing with her friends. In spite of this, Se-Yun always had better grades than her. 
When does she study? Keon He wondered. She decided that Se Yun must be getting very expensive private tutoring. Ki Yun He chewed on her nails out of anxiety. She felt as if she and her family would be doomed to live in poverty forever if she didn't figure out a way to beat Se Yun and become the top student. So she threw herself into her studies more than ever before. She hardly slept and studied so hard that she felt like her eyes could bore a hole through her textbooks. As time passed, dark circles formed under her eyes. Finally, the exam that she had prepared so much for was over. All her classmates complained that the exam was way too difficult. She sat back in the chair and smiled, believing that she had aced it. I will finally beat her this time. Kian He closed her eyes and could already imagine Se Yun's tearful face. At last, the day that they would receive the report cards came. The room was filled with varying reactions to the report cards. Some were crying, some were relieved, and some just didn't care. Kian He looked at a report card with confidence. There, her face twisted in shock. Second place on the report card, it was written that she scored second best again. She took to look at Se Yun and saw her smiling brightly with her friends. She had lost her again. Kion was so stunned after this that she could not focus during any of her classes. Only one thing filled her mind and that was Se Yun. How the hell could she beat me every time? It must be the expensive private lessons. But I don't have that kind of luxury. This means that I could never beat her. It's over now. We will just have to live in poverty forever. Kion He, from the trauma of her stress, developed a mental disorder and ended up killing herself. A rumor spread after her death that a ghost had begun to appear in the library. It is said that if you remain in the library to study until midnight, a girl will glare at you with her chin resting on her hands before suddenly disappearing. Alright, interesting context for that ghost. Oh wow, he's still here? You must have listened to me talk about the library ghost this entire time. Oh look, it's Albert Einstein. Alright, so if I look up, library ghost should be there. There she is. <laughs> Everyone's favorite ghost. I think she killed me one time. Alright, I think I'll just make a save with this then. So when you run out of fellow tit pins, just go into the next building. That just auto saves for you. Because currently I'm out of fellow tit pins. Something fell down. An incorrectly solved math problem. Nahai, a junior year student at Y High School, was a top student. Smart and outgoing, she was especially adored by their homeroom teacher. Perhaps that was why she was always full of herself. When the teacher wasn't around, she would act snotty and as if she was better than everyone else in her class. None of her classmates liked her. Everyone avoided her, but Nahai could not care less. What does it matter what they say or think about me? They're all losers, Nahai thought to herself. Nahai was prideful and had a large ego. Then one cool autumn day, the subject for fifth period was math, the subject that the homeroom teacher taught. It was right after lunch and with the cool breeze coming through the window, most students were nodding off during the lesson. To wake the class up, the irritated teacher called a few students to the board to solve some math problems. Nahai was one of the students who was called up. One by one, students returned to their seat after solving their problem. Since the problems were easy, no one got them wrong, except Nahai. She had read the question wrong and incorrectly solved the problem. This was unheard of considering her skill in math. In front of the whole class, the teacher rebuked Nahai saying that, it was a stupid mistake. The teacher intended for Nahai to remember the embarrassment and never make the same mistake again. Nahai could not lift her head out of shame. Her face turned right red. The kids could not stop snickering. The fact that the teacher's pet was being scolded right in front of them was fun and satisfying. When the teacher left at the end of the lesson, all the kids started talking about what had happened to Nahai. They sounded exciting like they had finally had something to hold over her. Nahai was angry. She blamed the teacher who embarrassed her in front of the class. She hated her classmates who took it as an opportunity to talk behind her even more. She was angry at herself for getting the stupid question wrong. Even when she went home after school, she could not get it out of her mind. She hated her eyes for reading the question wrong. It's not my fault, she decided. She rationalized to herself that the problem was not on hers, but her eyes. Soon, a terrible sound was heard, and the workbook on her desk was splattered with red. The next day, Nahai's classmates trembled with fear when it was announced that Nahai had committed suicide by digging her own eyes out with a knife. 
After this happened, a rumor spread that whenever a math problem is left out on the chalkboard, Nahai's ghost is summoned. It is said that the ghost would stare at the problem on the chalkboard, but her eye sockets would be empty holes. This is different from the story that I read on Winky. I think the Winky gave me a false story. I recall on the internet, someone typed up that the classmates wrote a question that was impossible for Nahai to answer, and she ended up committing suicide. So someone gave me the wrong information. Oh yeah. There's the math ghost. <coughs> Poor her. Find my body for me. The weather was so hot that it made it hard to breathe, and the cicadas would not stop chirping. The foreman in charge of construction to connect the new building to the old found everything irritating. In his opinion, it was a pointless project, but he wasn't going to complain since it was paid work. The sun blazed even hotter after lunch, and heat waves rose off the asphalt. The workers protested that it was too hot to work. The foreman was both jealous and spiteful of the brash attitude of the workers. However, he agreed it was too hot to work. The foreman ordered his workers to take a break, no progress was being made anyway, and if a worker happened to get heat stroke, it would just make matters worse. Everyone found a spot in the shade and slept soundly. Then something happened while everyone was deep in sleep. A loud cracking sound echoed around campus. It sounded like the scaffolding had crashed through the safety net. Still drowsy from their nap, the workers paid no attention to it and went back to sleep. It was a different matter for the foreman. If there was indeed a problem with the safety net, it would be his responsibility. He yelled at the workers to check out the safety net, but they pretended like they didn't hear him. Annoyed, the foreman realized that he had to check it out for himself. The workers who were debating whether to get up or not were glad that the foreman had left without them. Suddenly, the foreman yelled and then was cut off, leaving an eerie silence. The workers jumped up and rushed to the foreman. The foreman was frozen in shock, staring at a terrible sight where the scaffolding had fallen through the safety net, was the dead body of a woman. The woman's corpse had no head, and the foreman's and the workers instantly recognized the dead woman as someone who worked in a local restaurant. From the chopped stuff of her neck, dark red blood was spewing out, soaking into the ground. The foreman and the workers kept their mouths shut and moved quickly. It was the first time that they had worked together so harmoniously. Despite searching everywhere, they could not find the missing head. In the end, they buried the body in cement and sent it to the waste facility. It seemed like they did a perfect job covering up what had happened. No one would ever know what had happened aside from themselves. For some reason though, strange accidents kept on happening after the incident. Workers were injured much more frequently than before. This led progress on construction and the rumor spread among the workers that there was a ghost at the site. The foreman fumed with anger and ordered his men to keep their mouths shut. Then a pulley fell from the fourth floor and crushed a worker to death. While his body had been mangled by the pulley, his head was strang strangely unharmed. The foreman became terrified and decided to turn himself in to the police. Even then, rumors persisted that a floating head could sometimes be seen. Eventually, the construction work was completed despite the slow progress. When the school reopened after summer break, they were shocked to find that the dead woman's head in the garden, they say that the head looked as if it had just been cut off of the body, despite the fact that it had been out in the heat of the summer for weeks. I'm familiar with what they're talking about. Surprisingly, we have not encountered her yet. Ah. That's her, alright, boyo. Oh. Yep. Yeah. That was the ghost head. A one-sided love. Yun Sun, a junior in high school, was happy to attend school lately because of the new Korean language teacher. Tall and handsome, the new teacher also had a great personality. He never yelled or got mad at his students during his lessons, and he always stayed calm. Yun Sun felt her heart race when the teacher complimented her on her writing. The teacher even noticed when she recently changed her glasses and told her that the new glasses suited her well. Just thinking about him made Yun Sun jittery with happiness. Yun Sun was an average student. In fact, it would be more accurate to say that she was below average. She wasn't pretty or cute nor was she good at academics or sports. She also gained weight in the last few years and even her mother would nag her about losing some weight. She wasn't popular among her friends and she was not particularly adored by teachers either. She, she sounds a little bit like me, when I was like a kid at least. She was just a quiet student, always there in her same spot. That was how people around her would define her. Yun Sun too knew that she was no one special and tried to keep her crush to herself. 
but as time passes on, she could not hold her growing feelings inside. She didn't even expect to date or crush or anything. She only just wanted to let them know how she felt about him. Yun Sun worked up her courage and wrote an earnest letter. Next day, right before the Korean language class started, she secretly placed her love letter inside the attendance sheet. She could not dare to give her letter to him in person. As the time reaches closer for the class to begin, her heartbeat went faster and faster. Finally, the bell rang and the class began. But the teacher who came through the door was not the Korean language teacher. It was the gym teacher, who she disliked the most. He said that because of the Korean language teacher is running late, he would be supervising the class. Yun Sun felt a cold sweat. Many things would race through her mind. Would he call out attendance? Would he find my letter? If he did, he would just pretend he didn't see it. But in reality, she faced was harsh. The gym teacher opened up the attendance sheet, found Yun Sun's letter, and read it out loud to the whole class. That's brutal. Oh my goodness. The classroom soon filled with the snickering and jeering of the kids. The gym teacher then openly mocked her that even the fat, ugly kid yearns love just like everyone else. Someone should fire this gym teacher. This is not appropriate behavior. Yeah, it's not professional either. The disgusted looks and sneering from the class made her scared. Every single one of them was her enemy. She felt as if she had fallen into hell surrounded by demons. Right at that moment, the Korean language teacher entered the classroom. To Yun Sun, he seemed like her savior. He was confused by the strange vibe in the classroom. The gym teacher, getting such a kick out of the situation, handed Yun Sun's letter to him. Yun Sun looked at him and hoped that he would calm the situation down and make things right. The Korean language teacher finished reading her letter and turned to see Yun Sun. His face was twisted by a mixture of disgust, annoyance, and anger. That's very out of character of this teacher. If was as if he was looking at a repulsive insect. Her embarrassment and the sense of betrayal was too great. She killed herself that night in the school, but nobody spoke on why she really killed herself. Well, it's because she's not accepted. I mean, it's pretty clear throat. People show their true colors quickly in this game. Is this what I'm supposed to look at? Oh yeah, it is. Ow. That's right, these ghosts can kill you. The mystery in the dance studio. The dance department of Y High School was highly regarded for having produced a number of famous dancers. Many young talents hoping to be future ballerinas completed in Y High School's dance department. Out of these young talents, twin sisters named Ye Un and Ye Ji appeared the most promising. People speculated that they would grow up to become famous dancers and showered the young sisters with compliments. It was the younger twin, Ye Ji, who received higher praise than the older sister. It was difficult to decide which of the twins was better in terms of physical condition and technique, but it was generally agreed that Ye Ji was better at expressing herself and that she could move people's hearts through her performance. It's because she's the younger sibling. At first, Ye Eun didn't give much thought to the reviews, the same review kept repeating, and after losing the lead role to her sister in multiple performances, it began to worry her and she became nervous. In the meantime, the talent show for the school was quickly approaching. The performance from Y High School's dance department was such a good opportunity to make yourself known to the public since even the mass media took interest and covered it. Performing the main role in the show would be the equivalent to making a debut in the world of dance. The school decided to hold an audition for the main role to allow a fair selection. It was the day before the audition. Ye Eun was pacing back and forth in the dance studio nervously. Troubled by her thoughts, she believed that if Ye Ji were to take the leading role from her again this time, she would be doomed to live and Ye Ji shadow her the rest of her life. After long deliberation, it seemed like she had come to a conclusion she left the dance studio with an especially shiny pair of ballerina shoes. When did we ever encounter these shoes? Are they in this game? The next day, there was an accident during the audition. Ye Ji fell during her performance. Her foot was covered in blood, sliced by pieces of broken glass. I do not like the sound of that. That's reminiscing back to when I was taking a bath and there was glass inside the tub. So when I got out, my thigh got sliced, and it was excruciating. Her blood stained her ballerina shoes red. In the end, Ye Eun was picked to take the leading role. Ye Eun performed brilliantly and won the hearts of many fans. 
the media reported that she was the new emerging genius and aired special coverage on her every day. She even received scouting offers from a few famous ballet companies after her graduation. In contrast, Ye Ji was in complete despair and was slowly withering away. Ye Ji repeatedly tried to practice before her wounds were healed, and it made her injury worse and worse. Eventually, her injury became so terrible that she died of infection. When the music stopped, Ye Eun took a break from her practice and sat down to wipe the sweat from her face. She was alone in the dance studio after all the other students had gone home. Of course, Ye Ji would be here with her now if she was alive. For a moment, she thought about her sister. It gave her goosebumps, and she quickly pushed the thought away. She turned the music back on. Ye Eun got up and stood in front of the mirror, ready to resume her practice. She stopped when she noticed that there was something off with her reflection in the mirror. In the mirror, her ballerina shoes were stained red. Startled, she quickly looked down to check on her shoes, but there were a clean white pair of ballerina shoes. Right at that moment, she heard, I've been copying you perfectly so far, sister. Now it's your turn. You copy me now. Ye Eun's reflection in the mirror, the one that wore the bloody shoes, raised her hand slowly to grasp her neck. A gleeful grin spread across her face. Hmm. Interesting. So I guess this, uh, correlates to why we have a clone. I'm telling you, there is a lot to do in this game. More than I thought. <laughs> like, you think, like, finding all the endings was a lot. Wait until you try to find all the ghost stories. Uh, yeah, this ghost. I was never a fan of this ghost. He's a runner, he's a track star. Up oh, here's the doppelganger ghost. This was a cool ghost. I just wish that it worked the same way with modding in the game back then. Alright, Ghost has been defeated now. There's no interactive cutscene for this one. Okay, here's the weight scale. So we gotta weigh this out until we get that exact amount for the spider. Okay, that's too much. Hmm. Ah, there we go. The kid in the corner. So he had always been terrified of bugs ever since she was young. She was especially found spiders the most repulsive of all. Her school, Y High School, was an old building that was built at the base of a mountain. So naturally, there were a lot of bugs and spiders. She was always very stressed because of this. That's why she was so happy to begin her senior year. Unlike the first two years of high school, her classrooms this year were located in the new building. Since it's new, she expected there to be no bugs, and that she would be able to attend her classes carefree. On the first day, there was a strange girl in her class. This girl gave her the creeps because of her long hair covered most of her face, so he could not recall ever seeing her at the school before. The weird girl's face was so unfamiliar it made her doubt if she was really a student at her school. She always sat in the corner, away from others, and hardly ever moved. She wouldn't even get up during breaks or lunchtime. For some reason, so he couldn't help but be bothered by her. One hot summer day, unable to concentrate in class, so he snuck a glance at the weird girl. When she saw completely shocked her, the girl was chewing on a moth. Startled, so he turned to look at the buck eating girl again, but this time she saw nothing out of the ordinary. So he thought that she must have been seeing things because of the hot blazing day. Then the girl sent So He a knowing smirk. It creeped her out so much that she became terrified of her. After that, the creepy girl stopped coming to school. So He was bothered by her sudden disappearance at first, but as time passed in peace, she forgot about her. One day, while on her way home, So He realized that she left something at school, so she went back to get it. Just moments before the school was filled with the sounds of the students leaving, but now it was as quiet as the grave. So he entered the classroom and turned on the light. There was nothing but empty desks and chairs inside, just as it should be. So he went to her desk to retrieve what she had forgotten, where she spotted something black swaying in the back of the classroom out of the corner of her eye. So he squinted her eyes, taking a closer look at what was hanging. When she realized what she was looking at, she froze in terror. As she slowly raised her eyes, she could follow the long curtain of black hair up to the body of the creepy girl who had disappeared. The girl was clinging to the ceiling, her limbs twisted in inhuman angles. She looked like a spider perched in its web, preparing to pounce on its prey. Spotting So He, 
The spider girl scuttled quickly across the ceiling towards the petrified Sohi. The girl's long black hair shot out like a spider web, wrapping around Sohi and pulling her up. The lights flickered twice, then the classroom went dark. One long terrified scream echoed through the halls before it was abruptly cut off. No one ever saw Sohi again after that day. The spider that used to hang in the corner of the classroom was missing too. How did how did the spider girl get enrolled into the school? Like, they register a lot of the weirdos in this school, man. There's the spider ghost. I was looking for you. Yeah, so if you encountered this ghost in the original, it would crash the game. Which is pretty unnerving. Oh, there it goes again. Giving me the spooky bookie. Alright. This game has incredible sound effects. There's a lot of sound effects I have yet to hear in this. There's like, banging of trash cans going around right now. I think what I find extremely peeving, aside from having to figure out puzzles for the ghost stories, is finding keys for the toll boxes. Get out of here, before it's too late. Or you'll get trapped in the school forever too. That does make my heart sink, thinking about what happened to ji <laughs> At least I haven't done anything about that, they just like slide through the door. Okay. And then there's you. And then there's you. Dude, I cannot stand her. Maybe you're the one who's up to no good, huh? That's actually what I would have said to her. But I'll say this. Well, this just might work in my favor anyway. Uh, uh sure, I'll give her a coffee. I already have a coffee, but I'll give her another one. Is that for me? Yes. I'm very considerate. Oh. Did you, you didn't even open it. it? No, you can have the entire can. I have my own. My name is Fu Mao. My name is Fu Mao. <laughs> go freak yourself so young. Alright, well, I'm gonna go ahead and save here. I should have slept a couple of hours ago, but... I've been so focused on main building too. What? Did you find something? Shut up, so young. I'm trying to turn on cheats. Please go. How do I command her to move? I can just push her. I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> Run animation, so funny. Cheat activated. There we go. I miss these ghosts. They're like not in the sequel for some reason. Please be careful. She was actually considerate of me. Maybe it's because I was a bit of a douche back then. Yeah, I missed that. You know when the janitor whistles? That's what like brought up the creep factor to the new building. For anyone who's new to this game, this is not the same janitor from what we've had from the previous buildings. They just look the same. I don't want to hear it. Shut up. Chop off my head? I thought this was a children's song. There we go. She finished her song this time. What is that sound? I've never heard that sound before. I swear, that is the biggest load of BS. Windows me? Are you serious? We're using Windows me on this computer? Alright, so we just got one pin down, we just gotta put four more in. Is South Korea not one of them? What are we marking exactly? Okay, Africa? What else? Vietnam? Nope. Malaysia? Nope. Dude, I don't know. Oh, Australia. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. We got a bit of South America. What about my hometown? Nope. Okay. What? Oh. Okay, I had to look it up, so there's one in Canada. Tragedy brought by jealousy. Uh, this is that ghost that we encountered with the, uh, when we were in the bathroom. 
Anju and Young Hee were best friends, being friends since childhood, they had no secrets between them. They spent so much time together that they could almost read each other's minds. When they entered high school, Unju developed a crush on a guy a year older than her. Unju would always prattle on and on about him to Young Hee. Strangely, Young Hee's reaction to her close friend's biggest interest in life was rather icy. Hmm, not happy for your friend having a romantic relationship? Oh, maybe it's because it's a rivalry. Okay, I get it. She would only wish her a curt good luck, then be silent until a new subject arose. One day, Anju heard from another friend that the guy she liked had feelings for Young Hee instead. Oh. Oh, that's a twist. It turns out that Young Hee and the boy went to the same church. Anju wondered why Young Hee had never mentioned that. It was weird. From that point on, Anju was suspicious of every single thing Young Hee said or did. Soon, they grew so far apart that they wouldn't even say hello to each other. Sometime after, Unju found Young Hee and the boy sitting on the bench innocently talking. Envy filled her eyes. That evening, Unju called Young Hee up to the school's rooftop. They began to argue, but Young Hee kept on denying Unju's accusations. The arguing got louder and more heated, and out of anger, Unju pushed Young Hee off the rooftop. Young Hee fell down head first and died instantly without a sound. Anju gave a false statement to the police, and Young Hee's death was reported as a suicide. After some time passed, Anju was able to go out with her crush. One day, she made plans with her boyfriend to go on a date at school. They thought it would be a great idea to meet up in the middle of the night. That way, they could stay out of the heat, and it seemed adventurous. Anju arrived at the school first and was waiting in the empty classroom, when her boyfriend didn't show up after the promised time, and she began to get scared. Suddenly, thunk, thunk, thunk. She heard something echoing from the hallway, then she could hear a door opening. Not here. It wasn't her boyfriend's voice, it was a raspy voice of a woman that sent shivers down her spine. Thunk, thunk, thunk. The noise was getting louder and closer, until it was shaking the ground with every thunk. Anju heard another door open. Not here either. Oh boy, I like this. Thunk, 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 thunk. The thunking was getting closer to her now. Terrified, Anju dove under the teacher's desk to hide. She was quaking in fear. The door to enter the classroom flew open. Anju peeked at the door through a crack under the desk. There was nothing to be seen. Just when Anju thought something must be wrong, an object fell from the desk and Anju's eyes flew up to see what knocked it down. There you are! Anju screamed so loud that her voice echoed throughout the whole school. <laughs> Well, that's karma for ya. Yeah, that was unexpected. I wasn't expecting the story to go that way. Alright, this ghost. Can't wait for this. She doesn't sound that close, though. Ah, oh, there she goes. She's very close now. Hi. Wait for her. Why is there like an achievement where I had to encounter these ghosts multiple times? Don't you think that's a bit excessive? Actually, come to think of it, I have a similar story from MySpace. Without the depth, obviously. So there was just like this emo looking guy that this girl that I kind of liked, liked. But that guy ended up liking me. So then that girl got mad at me or something. I don't know what that guy saw in me. I was not attractive at all. Hmm. Voice that beckons me. A and B were very close classmates. A always took care of B, who was very fragile. I don't remember them bringing up the A and B story in the first game. Interesting. B was always thankful to A for that. Without A, B knew it would be impossible to have a normal school life. To B, A was the most important person in the world. Oh, so they're like best friends. Then one day, there was an accident at the school, there was a fire in the old school building, and unfortunately, B was inside. Oh, so that... Is that Sangha? Wait a minute. This is a different ghost story, though. B could not escape and died in the fire. A was deeply sad by B's death. She could almost hear B screaming out A's name, begging to be saved. In the imagination of A, the desperation voice 
calling for help from B slowly filled with the resentment. A felt very sad and thought that B's death was her fault. After that, A did not step outside her room. A's mind was full of thoughts about B, even while asleep. B would appear in the dream of A, resenting A for not being there to save B. Being awakened was no different. The voice of B always followed A. A knew it was the auditory hallucination created by her sadness and guilt, but A was in agony nonetheless. A began to lose weight day by day, suffering from pain and guilt. Then one night, A quietly snuck out of her home to visit the school. A passed the bench in the school field where they always sat and chatted with each other. Arrived at the spot where B died, A heard a resentful voice of B even there. A thought it was time to end her agony, to escape the sadness and guilt of losing a friend she loved. Okay, I think I know who this is. This is Ha Na Young, isn't it? A chose suicide. A thought that though it was going to be where B was now, would only be the way to escape from the haunting voice of B. Okay, yep. A chose to hang herself. The pain was so great that A couldn't breathe until her sight slowly faded away. As if coming to greet A, the face of B appeared faintly in front of her. The face of B, glowing with the haze of blue light, was smiling brightly. B's face came closer and whispered, Thanks. I needed you to die so I can live again. A struggled to breathe to save herself from her fate. The voice that just whispered was the voice of B, the same voice that had been following A ever since B died. A wasn't hearing things, the voice was real. Mm-hmm. Horror games at its finest. I felt like this was more effective in the original. Because you can see her disappearing right at the distance. There's a chrysanthemum here left for someone. Hmm? I think if I look back now... Yes, that scared me to death. I wasn't recording this one time, and I got scared so hard, I did not even want to continue the game. Oh, those were good times. Anyway, yeah, now we can carry off with that. And here she is again. The mystery in the biology lab. I got an achievement. A cult club president. Many strange rumors surrounding the biology lab, but most of them feature a walking mannequin or a scraping noise across the floor. Also, most of these rumors were based off of the history of the school building. The history of the school building goes all the way back to the occupation era. The building was used as a concentration camp for political prisoners. Yeah, we get it. They brought this up so many times. Some parts of the concentration camp were used by the occupying military to conduct horrendous experiments on human subjects. Every single experiment that was conducted there was evil and hu inhumane. The screens of the subjects filled the air around the clock. The students believed that the location of the biology lab used to be one of those human experimentation labs. So every time there was an accident in the biology lab, the students always brought up the idea that it had something to do with the curse of the human experiment victims who were killed there or that the head researcher remained in the form of a ghost. Some even went on to say that the anatomy mannequin in the corner of the room was actually a corpse of one of the experiment subjects. However, the most famous rumor of them all was the imprisonment accident. D didn't get very good grades, but he was especially interested in science, and he worked hard at his studies. The science teacher took pity on him and recommended D to be in school's representative for a science contest. D saw it as a great opportunity for him and studied even harder. With the teacher's permission, he stayed behind every day after school, ended to study more, and prepare himself for the contest. The area which he spent the greatest amount of effort on was the human anatomy composition. He studied the anatomy mannequin on a daily basis. A few days before the science contest, D, who was studying alone in the biology lab, was so exhausted that he fell asleep. When he woke up, it was dark, and the lights had been turned off. He tried to turn the lights back on, but it didn't work. Even the door seemed to be a lock from outside. He had no choice but to stay in the dark, biology lab, and spent the night there. He usually never bothered to think about the rumors, but his current situation triggered his memory to replay all the scary stories he had heard. The more he tried to not think about them, the stronger they came to his mind. D was becoming more afraid with each passing second. He was especially afraid of the anatomy mannequin in the dark. His heartbeat raced and it was becoming hard for him to breathe. D was so scared that he decided to light an alcohol lamp. 
Just as the flame brought its flickering light to the room, the anatomy mannequin suddenly came alive and slowly started to move towards D. Uh, it's because he's panicking. Yeah, that's why he became alive. And that's why I sort of panicked too when I drank all those coffee cans. The next morning, D was found dead in the biology lab. The cause of death was reported as a heart attack. What was failed to be explained was that his nails were ripped from their beds. And on the biology lab's door, there were scratch marks with trails of blood and a word scrawled in blood that read, Anatomy Mannequin. I didn't think an anatomy mannequin could do that to the poor fella. Okay. Alright, so I think what I have to do here is drink a bunch of coffee cans. This is why. I think the door is locked too. Yep, it's locked. You have to hit me? Oh, yeah, you do have to hit me. I drank a bunch of caffeine. This is the ghost story? Oh, this is the mermaid. Wait, what? I was looking for the doppelganger one. There was a big pond in Y High School. Since the school was so old, the fish in the pond were large and different from the average fish. Some even known to understand humans. A female student named Dee really cared for the fish in the pond. She took charge of feeding the fish and cleaning around the pond from the custodian. Whenever she had free time, she would just sit by the pond. There was a rumor that the fish did performances for her when she came to the pond. Her friends called Dee the Fish Princess. Then an infamous bad boy became interested in Dee. He was known to be a thief with bad temper. He confessed to Dee and said that they should go out, but he was rejected on the spot. His ego was bruised in an act of revenge by constantly bullying and threatening her. It was really tough on Dee, but she believed that he would lose interest at some point and patiently absorb it all. Then the accident happened. It was raining cats and dogs when the bad boy made his way to the pond and began harassing Dee. Dee had enough of his bullying and yelled at him to stop. Angry, the boy pushed her. Dee stumbled, fell, and hit her head hard on a rock. She died instantly. Afraid of being caught, the boy tried to hide her body. He chopped her body into pieces and fed them to the fish in the pond. Even the blood of Dee was washed away into the pond by the rain. Nobody witnessed this horrendous crime besides the fish. Dee's absence was reported to the police and the investigation began. From the statements made by her friends, the police centered their investigation around the pond, but no trace of her could be found. Time went on and no further evidence surfaced. Soon, the case went cold. Some time passed without incident until a student went missing during gym class at the rooftop swimming pool. The students who saw what happened stated that the missing kid acted as if something was pulling him under the water. No trace of him could be found even after emptying the pool. In the midst, in the midst of this mass confusion, the missing boy came floating up in the pond. His body looked like it had been chewed In the midst of this mass confusion, the boy came up floating in the pond. His body looked like it had been chewed to bits by animals. It was the same boy who bullied Dee. Well, that's karma for ya. A rumor soon circulated that every night, when it rains, if you go near the pond or swimming pool, you would spot a strange creature. The students who've seen it describe it in two ways. It's either a fish that looks like a human, or a human that looks like a fish. Alright. Well, you can literally call her a fish princess now, then. Okay, mermaid ghost time. Just gonna jump right in. What if I don't do anything? I wonder. Okay, I die even though I'm on god mode. I don't think I've ever seen this death scene. Oh, that looked kind of brutal. Okay, we're finally done with that. That's kind of an annoying ghost. Hi? Oh, this is... Oh, it's a puzzle. Oh. I didn't think I'm gonna have to figure this out. Okay, is this like going from... Uh, earliest to latest? Yes. This is it right here. Alright. Man with Justin Bieber hair goes first. This guy goes last, and you switch these guys around. 
Yay! We got the ghost story document now. Right here. The missing children. So this is the grandma and grandpa one. Jung Jae was heading home really late after a school club activity. He belonged to the Mystery Research Club. They collected and studied all kinds of rumors, myths, and urban legends. The collection was not only from their own school, but from every city around. Lately, he was working on sorting through contents for the sporadically published club magazine. At a busy time like this, the club's president was nowhere to be seen. Due to his absence, Jung Jae, as vice president, had to do everything himself. That was the reason why he was heading home too late. Still preoccupied with his work, he was thinking about the magazine even while he was crossing the bridge. Just then, somebody spoke to him. Hello, dearie. I'd like to ask you something. It was a kind of warm-looking grandma who approached. Her Ching Nong hairstyle and her bent back reminded Jung Jae of his own grandma out of the countryside. Right before he was going to answer her, he suddenly paused and wondered. Why was this old lady at school at this late of hour? In that moment, he recalled a ghost story that he had investigated a while back. The building of Y High School was erected in the occupation era and was used as a refugee camp during the Korean War. In the refugee camp, there were lots of orphans who had lost their parents in the midst of war. Since the situation was so grim, no one really had the luxury of worrying about these kids. Then some grandma took these orphans under their wing and took care of them. The kids depended on her and got along with her. The people didn't suspect anything of this grandma. Then one day, the grandma and the orphans suddenly disappeared. The refugees thought it was strange, but as if they had previously agreed, they had kept silent about it. It was a time where such things happened. A short while after that, a woman came to the camp. She was a mother of one of the orphans. The woman went through so much to find the whereabouts of her child and was finally here to reunite with them. When she heard of the disappearance of her child, she wailed with despair. The refugees who felt a little guilty about not having done anything about the disappearance of the orphans were finally moved to action by the woman's heart-wrenching cries. Led by a former hunter, a few refugees decided to help the woman and search for the missing orphans. They followed the trail of the children up into the mountains. When they got halfway up, they found an old, run-down hut. They were greeted with a rotting stench of corpses inside the hut and found the hut was full of small white bones which seemed relatively fresh. It was said that they had never found the old grandma. Jung Jae couldn't figure out why he had suddenly remembered the ghost story. Feeling spooked, he kept his mouth shut. Maybe it was the old traditional dress that the grandma was wearing. The old grandma, who was pressing on Jung Jae with her question slowly revealed herself, and her face twisted and turned into a face of demon. From her dark and empty eye sockets, red light gleamed. She mumbled as she smacked her lips. So close. What a pity. The next thing he knew, he was waking up at his desk. He must have fallen asleep while sorting out the materials. Still, it seemed all too real to just be a dream. On the paper in front of him, there was a warning from the material he was reading right before he fell asleep. Never answer her questions. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Was not expecting the grandma story to be taken in that way. She ended up being a bit more of an urban legend. Sweetie, where are you? Come to Gramps. Yo, Grandpa, my granny has Instagram. <laughs> oh, there's the Grandma or Grandpa ghost. I don't remember what exactly it was. I think the internet says Grandma, but the audio says Gramps. This will do it for all the hidden ghosts of White Day at Labyrinth Named School. Hopefully it'll do something similar for the sequel, but something tells me that I'm doubting it, just because it's made by a different developing group. I gotta say, it took a long time to find all the documents. I spent three days, and that's with the cheat engine. Imagine if I didn't have a cheat engine. It probably would've taken me like a week or two. Like, this was not fun at all. And there was so much reading in those ghost stories. I did not anticipate that at all. My throat hurts from reading all of that, so I'm going to be going to sleep after this so it can rest. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll catch you all in the next video. I don't think I'm going to like... Like, I could, but I don't think I'm going to look for all the figurines. Yeah, I only found this one figurine. I don't think it's worth it. I think I've played enough of White Day. <laughs> 
This game got me out of my white day addiction. Be sure to like and subscribe if you all want to see the good ending to this YouTube channel. We're still on the road to 100k, and I'm out.